Let's pray. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for moving in our midst. Thank you for changing our lives. Father, in the name of Jesus, your glory is awesome. Your presence is awesome. Continue doing what you're doing in our lives as you as you are transforming us into your image, Jesus. We love you. We bless you. We honor you. We stand in awe of how great you are and your loving care for us. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Uh, it is. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure exactly what uh, what I, I need to say. I don't think I need to say anything. Um, but there, there's just so so much that God has put on my heart that uh, I'm I'm blessed to be able to to minister to church leaders all over the world and uh, individually, corporately, hundreds, thousands of them at a time sometimes. And it, it's, I, I really, really, really have a heart. God's given me a heart for those who are in leadership. And uh, it's a hard place. We, and we, we, we found that many, we'll ask the question many times, you know, uh, to groups of pastors and church leaders, so how many of you have come to this conference, come to this meeting, and you felt like if God didn't move this time, this meeting, you're done. You're just done. Mm -hmm. It's amazing to me the number of people that say, that's me. This is it. I'm finished. I can't take it anymore. And, you know, God didn't intend it to be that way. He's given us everything that we need to overcome, everything that would come against us. The salvation that he's given us is so great. It's a so great salvation. It's an awesome salvation. It's it, it, it's, the church hasn't really understood how great salvation is. Amen. It, it, it's, it's, it's phenomenal. And, and all that it includes, you know, when you when you look in, in your Bible and you study that word sozo, you know, the word for saved, it, it's, it's not just eternal life. You know, if that's all it was, I'd be happy. I would thank God and I'd be happy. But that's not all it is. It's, it's healing. It's, it's deliverance. It's being made whole. It's, it's, it's gaining your senses back. It's being set free. It's Amen. being having your eyes open. It's having your ears open. It's, it's coming, being able to come to know your maker. I mean, what when we, when we lead someone to the Lord, don't we say, hey, look, at all he really wants is a relationship with you. Mm -hmm. Don't we yeah. say that? Yeah. Okay, then we get him saved and we get him in the church and then somehow changes. To yeah. now, what God is asking for is to do all these things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It didn't change in God's sight. All he ever wanted was a relationship with us. It started, it started in the garden. He just wanted a relationship with Adam and Eve. You know, they, they messed up and, and they sinned. And people say that God threw them out of the garden. He didn't throw them out. Read the Bible. He put them out to keep them from, from living forever in their sin. Because he loved them so much. He still, he still fellowship with them. He still loved them. He still communed with them. And we, we, do you want me to stop moving so much? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Forget the tripod. It, 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 we've got to get a grip on what is the nature of our God? What is his heartbeat really like? Is he an angry, is he a mean God, or is he a loving God, an unconditionally loving God? We've got to make up our mind because we've got to, get, you know, we, we can't be divided in our opinion. Of, of what our God is like. He is love. He is the definition of love. Amen. He, he is unconditional love. Jesus paid the price. And he paid the price in full. I, 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 I you know, I'm praying for people all the time. Thousands and thousands of people pray for. You know, and, and the bottom line for me is I just want to see Jesus get what he paid for. Amen. I want to see this person healed because Jesus gets what he paid for. I want to see this person delivered because Jesus gets what he paid for. Not because, you know, I look good or not because the person's going to be blessed. Yeah, that all happens. But my goal is to see Jesus get what he paid for. I want to see him blessed and honored. I want to see him rejoicing and jumping up, standing up in heaven and saying, yeah, go son. Yeah. For his glory. You know, it, 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 it's uh, to be to be in, in leadership. It's uh, you know, the disciples asked Jesus. They said, you know, how, you know, 
How do we become great in the kingdom? And he said, you want to become great? Become the greatest servant. Amen. Amen. We, we go places and they always want us to introduce ourselves. They want to make these big marquees up and banners, you know. And We went to South Africa the last time. I, I couldn't believe it. We're driving down the road and there's this huge billboard with my face on it. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's just... It, it, you know, we, 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 we look for, what is it in us that looks for that kind of recognition? My ministry, my anointing, my goods. This is, this is, what is it in us that looks for that? It's, it's not God. It's the flesh. It's the flesh. It, it's, 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 not, it's not the part that brings glory to God. So, you know, we get up and want us to introduce ourselves. I say, here's how we introduce ourselves. We're the more brothers and sisters. Whatever we got men and women on our team, we say we're the more brothers and sisters. What do you, what do you mean? Well, we, we, we just want to release more of the life of God out of us to you. That's it. That's all we're about. It really hit me when we just got back from Mozambique. Uh, I mean, it was I, I told told the people at church that you know it was every every single person that received a miracle except the last one we saw it was healing as a as a pupil and their eye began to form because there was no pupil. One hundred percent of the people received the miracle. I mean, that, that's like phenomenal. So this pastor comes up to me and he says, "Wow!" He says, "You know, my life, my ministry has completely changed. It'll never be the same again after all the truth that I that I've had imparted to me." He said, and he looked at me. He said, "What did you say your name was?" <laughs> you know? And I said, "Yes, God, I hit it. Yes." He knew that it wasn't about me. It wasn't about our team. It was about Jesus. Yeah. It's about Jesus. Yeah. They, they, they grabbed a hold of who Jesus was to them and yes. in them. And they said, you know what? He's going to speak through me. He's going to live through me. He's going to pray through me. He's going to reach out through me. They just got it. Amen. See, Christianity is about Jesus yes. in us Amen. by the power of the Holy Ghost living his life through us. Yes. That's it. Amen. That's just love going around loving people, you know, okay. wherever we go. We, we, we were, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open the Bible in a minute. You know, I, <laughs> you know we, because we minister to a lot of church leaders, they, they don't feel that the meeting is legal until the Bible's been read. <laughs> so uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get there. Um, we're out on the street, and we're just walking the street. We're training guys after having a conference. We're just walking the street, showing them how to pray for people and to see God touch them. And there's this beggar that's sitting there. And I looked at him, and he had one leg, regular leg, and one leg, just a half a leg. And he's sitting there. And I said, can I pray for you? He said, sure, go ahead. I said, all right. So I began to pray for him, and I began to command that leg to grow out. And uh, we've seen it happen many times, and I'm just fully expecting this leg's going to go, just pop right out. Well, it didn't. I prayed once, I prayed twice, I prayed three times, nothing. And I just looked at him, and he's crying. I said, Holy Spirit, I bless what you're doing. I don't know what you're doing, but I bless what you're doing. Continue doing it. So I just started blessing the man. And then, and then I said, could you tell me what's going on with you? And, 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 he's, and he, he, he he said to all the other beggars around, he says, all of you guys, come over here. Everybody, come over here. All the beggars came over. He says, I've got something to tell you. And they all, they all got it again around him. And he, you know, he, he would give, people would give him money. He'd stick it in his pocket. He had a big pocket up here. He'd stick it in there. His pocket was stuffed with money. And, and he called the guys, all the other beggars over. And he's weeping, crying. He's taking the money out. He says, here, here. Take this money, I bless you. Take this money, I bless you. And I'm like, whoa, what is happening here? And, you know, he, he gave away all his money, and all the beggars just took off. And he's sitting there, I said, what just happened to you? He said, I have never in my life encountered the love of God, the love of Jesus Christ, until right now. I felt his love like I've never felt before. And I knew that he saved me. And I knew that I had I had to bless other people because all my blessing has been from Jesus. And I gotta give it away. Oh I didn't tell him that. That was just amazing. He, this, this man, he got touched with the 
What is, what is our responsibility? Our responsibility is to bring people an encounter with heaven, an encounter with the reality of the living Jesus, an encounter with the love of Christ. That's our responsibility. How, whatever form that takes, it don't matter. I've just hugged people before, and they would break down, and they get healed because I'm hugging them. And I never say a word. You know what it says in Mark chapter 16? It says that these signs will follow those who believe. They will lay hands on the sick, and the sick will recover. He did not say they will lay hands on the sick and pray. Oh. Religion says we need to pray. Well, we do need to pray. But that's not what he said there, is it? Because he wants us to know what we are carrying, who we are carrying, and we are we are arcs. We're carrying the glory of God everywhere we go. And you just touch them. I walk through crowds and I do this. It's touching people. And it's it's funny because some people will stop and go. But I know what happened. I mean, they, they just they just got imparted to by the power of God. We we need to know this so great salvation that we've been given. And we need to get back to the simplicity of the gospel. It's been so complicated in the church. I mean, we minister to a lot of churches, a lot of churches that are really bent on the law. You know, they really are bent on the law. And you've got to abide by these things and do these things. And, and they have sacrificed and lost the relationship with Jesus. Amen. And we show them, we show them why we are under the law anymore. Um, look at this. Let's turn in our Bibles. Okay, here we go. Right. <laughs> Let's turn in our Bibles to. Oh, yeah. Yeah, hallelujah. If you go, if you go to. <laughs> okay. Romans chapter five. It says in verse thirteen. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. You know, for the first 2,000 years from Adam, God, God didn't impute sin. He didn't count sin against them. Sin was in the world. They were sinning. The problem was, until the law came, they could, the law exposes to us what sin is. It shows us what sin is. The law actually causes sin to be blossom and to come out of us. So even 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 more so, okay? So um, for the first 2,000 years, God didn't do it, but I mean, the human race was getting so bad, so corrupt, that God, in his mercy, needed to do something to cause people to see that they could not live their life without a savior. So he sent the law to show people that they needed a savior, that they couldn't, they couldn't live without him. That they needed someone to help them, that they couldn't be independent. And I love, um, there's just tons of scripture on this, okay? But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to, I'm just going to go right over here. Well, let's, let's first, let's first go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, okay? Are you with me? First Corinthians 13. First Corinthians 15. First Corinthians 15, 56 says the sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. The strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives. Who gives. You can just stick together my mind. All the time. Gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Where is the victory? Jesus. Through Jesus, right? Okay, so the law was given to help sin overcome us. The law was given to help sin overcome us, to show us that we can't live without you. In Galatians, you got to read all of Galatians. Yeah. You got to read all of Galatians, okay? Because it's just packed with it, okay? It says that the law was given to be a tutor, to tutor us, to show us, to bring us to Christ. Christ is the end of the law. He's the end. What does that mean? 
That means the whole purpose was to bring us to him so we could get back to relationship again. So we would need all these rules and regulations. What did, what did the scripture you read? You are no longer, if you're led by the spirit, you are no longer under the law, right? Okay, we're no longer under a set of rules when we are being led by the spirit. The key absolutely for us to live and to bring forth the life of God is to be led by the spirit and not under the law. If you let's go over to, let's go over to Romans chapter ten. Okay, it says verse one, brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. For I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. I don't know, you know how it worked for you when you first received salvation, uh, but I, I, I had this I had this zeal for God that. People thought I was whacked. I mean, really, they still think I'm whacked. But I, 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 I mean, uh, I didn't. I didn't have. I didn't have scriptural knowledge. I just knew something really powerful happened to me, changed me on the inside, and I was different. And I was going to tell everybody I knew that they they needed to get right and get to Jesus. Amen. I had this zeal, but I had this zeal without knowledge. What is zeal without knowledge? It's excitement for the things of God without the knowledge of who you are in Christ. Amen. Without the knowledge of who it is that's alive and living in you. Without the knowledge of where this power and anointing comes from. There are people running all over the world to, to go get another anointing. Do you know that you have the anointing in you? Amen. The anointing is the presence of God. He's living in you. You don't have to go anywhere. You just learn to let him out. Amen. That's it. So we have this zeal without knowledge. Okay? So the knowledge is let's learn who we are in Christ. Let's learn what he's done for us. Let's learn what his salvation includes. Let's, let's discover that he has completely wiped away all sin. Amen. Past, present, and future, he's completely removed it. It's not an issue for God anymore. When we, be, when we make it an issue, we bring the law in. Amen. And we make it an issue. The religious people make it an issue. And then we've taken people away from the relationship and say that now you're going to please God by doing these things. Uh -huh. And that's, that's the law. Yeah. Now here, here's, here's, here's the kicker, okay? We are, there's two kinds of righteousness. There's the righteousness that Jesus gives us that they had talked about. He, we have become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He became righteousness for us. He paid the price for all sins so that we could be made righteous. How do we receive that? It's the grace of God, is it not? How did you get saved? Ephesians chapter 2. You were saved by grace, by the grace of God, through faith. You believed that Jesus had paid the price in full for all your sins, right? Yeah. You believed it was a done deal. You believed in it. And your belief in that grace got you saved. Amen. Amen. Right? Amen. Okay. That's not supposed to change after we come into the kingdom. That's right. Everything that we get should be appropriated to the same grace that Jesus has given for us. Paid price in full. We just believe. Amen. It's so simple, it's ridiculous. Amen. A religion is so complicated, this thing. Yeah. 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 Apostle Paul wrote to the Corinthians, Corinthians and he said, um, uh, you know, you've got, you've got to watch out for, for the deception that would keep you from the simplicity of faith in Christ and Christ alone. That's it. <laughs> Everything comes to us as we receive by faith in what Jesus has done. Jesus has done it all. Yes. He's finished it. It's not like when we get someone saved, it's not like Jesus is coming now down from heaven and he's dying on the cross again for them right now for their sins. No. They're believing something that's already been completed for them. Yes. That's right. They believe that Jesus 2,000 years ago already did that for them. Yes. Okay, by his stripes, you were healed. 2,000 years ago, you were healed. Amen. How can we pray in confidence for people that when we pray for them, they're going to be healed? Because we know Jesus has already done it. And by our faith, we're appropriating that for this person. Amen. 
in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It's so simple, it's crazy. It's crazy good. It's crazy good. And we see it now, and church leaders all over the world are like, you gotta be kidding. It's that simple, you know, and we start we start talking, we start sharing with them, and, and they think we're absolutely nuts. But what, what happens? What happens is the Holy Spirit always has us demonstrate. If the gospel is being given, there will be a demonstration of power. The gospel is not in word only, but in demonstration of power in the Holy Ghost. If you are proclaiming the gospel, there better be a demonstration of power. Because that ratifies the word. Yes. Amen. So we know, we know, we start talking, and they're, they're the, you know, the religious mindset is thinking, these guys are bad. They don't have a clue. And so we say, okay, you, you, you think that God won't heal someone who's got sin in their life? I mean, there's all these crazy rules and, and beliefs that are in the church. Like, oh, you know, the reason that person didn't get healed is because they got sin in their life. Like, sin is an issue. Is sin an issue for God or not? No. 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 It's an issue for us, isn't it? Yes. If your life is full of sin, you're going to have some. You're going to have some critter problems. Okay. You're going to get some agita. You know, you're gonna, agita is Italian for upset stomach. You know, you're going to have a rough go. Okay. But we're, it's only only because you're not believing the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth. And the truth will set you free. Amen. I, I mean, I, I, I spent years trying every measure of deliverance to help people that was out. I tried it all to get people free because I just wanted to see people free. And, and, and you know, he, he brought me all through all of that to show me all you got to do is just believe I've already set them free. Amen. And watch what I do. The same way we received eternal life is the same way we get free from everything. You know what we do? We confess and agree with the enemy's work. Right? We go through the day confessing our pains, confessing our sickness, confessing this happiness, confessing all this. I know I'm, I feel depressed. We, we just confess the work of the devil. So we go, we go out from underneath his covering. What is, what is he saying in Colossians? That... Um, we, we died and we were hidden with him in Christ. Now, if you are hidden in Christ, tell me how the devil's going to find you if you're hidden in Christ. Tell me how he's going to put anything on you if you're hidden in Christ. He can't. We have to begin confessing and believing this, 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 that, we're, that we're still under the law. We still got these issues. There's all these problems. That's when you give freedom. Okay, the law opens the door for sin to show us again that we can't live without this relationship. That's it. Just simply faith in him. He says in verse 2, For I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness, and that comes by faith, and seeking to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted to the righteousness. But it's only according to our faith. Jesus said, they kept asking, how the heck did we do this stuff you're doing? Man, this is awesome. He said, only believe. Yes. Only believe. He didn't say, all right, you got it. You're gonna to have to read this, the Holy Scrolls. Scrolls. Oh, <laughs> Scrolls. <laughs> Scrolls. You know, for eight hours a day, you're gonna to have to fast and pray, put on some sackcloth. Okay, guys, it's not gonna be easy. It's gonna to be tough. Now, okay. No, he said, only believe. He's bringing in the new covenant. He's bringing in. He's bringing in the new way for us. He's bringing in the new, bringing us back on board to the relationship he wanted to have with Adam and Eve in the beginning. I, I, are you with me? Yes. Amen. So it's, he says, he says here, verse four: For Christ is the end of the law. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. If you don't believe, you're still under the law, and all manner of garbage is going to come into your life. To everyone who believes, that's the essence of Christianity. 
Christianity. We believe in the grace. That's What is grace? Grace is what God does for us. Yes. What's the law? The law is what we try to do to God, for God, bless God, to get God to move. That's the law. Everything that we do to try to get God to do something is the law. Amen. He's already done it all. Everything you need for life and godliness has already been given to you. Yeah. The Holy One, the Righteous One is living in you. They're a brand new creation. Over in verse, chapter 11, verse 6, it says, And if by grace, then it is no longer of works. Now you got to get this. If by grace, it is no longer of works. Otherwise, grace is no longer grace. Amen. But if it is of works, it is no longer grace. Otherwise, work is no longer work. I mean, how does it get easier than that? As soon as we say, Jesus plus something, we're over into the law, into works, where all the problems are. It's not Jesus plus fasting and praying. It's not Jesus plus going out and do good works. It's not Jesus plus anything. It's just Jesus. Okay, people, people listen to me say that, and they say, oh, man, you know what? People are going to think, okay, they don't need to do nothing now. That they don't understand. They haven't, they haven't had a revelation of the love of God and what Jesus paid for, the, for us to be free. Amen. They haven't had a revelation of the high price that Jesus. It says in, it says in first, second Corinthians chapter 5 that he became sin. Not, not just took our sins out. He became sin. How many of you watched the movie Mel Gibson's movie? How many of you were moved by that? Do you know that that didn't even begin to come close to depicting what happened to Jesus when he became sin for us? Every disease known to mankind for every, all, all, all of time, every every infirmity, every every pounding, every everything negative, every emotional upheaval, everything got put on him. I, I, I can't even fathom what that was like. He paid a huge price for us to be free. It wasn't cheap. Yeah, we, we by grace, we through grace, with our faith, we receive everything. But it, it, it's free to us, but it wasn't free. When we understand how much God loved us to come and do that for us, I want to tell you, since I received revelation of the, of the love of Jesus Christ for me, it's not the judgment that moves me. It's the love of Christ that compels me to go for him. And, and, and when we harp on judgment and, and we harp on people, do you understand that when we talk to people about all the things that are wrong with them and their sin and all these issues, do you understand it's really illegal for a believer to do? Because that's old creation. I have been crucified. Who's been crucified? My old man. Okay. I've been crucified with Christ. And I, that guy, that guy who used to sin, is dead. Yes. Yeah. All you got left is the memory of the way he used to think. That's why your mind needs to be renewed. But when we get into talking to people about all those things that are wrong, do you know what we're doing? We were, we were having a prayer last night, and, 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 and this just popped out. You know, it's, it's like going to the graveyard. Yeah. Digging up a dead body yeah. and, try, and trying to interact with the body. Mm -hmm. Come on, say something! <laughs> say something! <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I mean, you know, we're messing with dead things. Yes. We're playing with dead things. Right. Whatever we talk about, why, why does it say that nothing can separate us from the love of Christ? It mentions all the stuff in Romans 8, chapter 38, except the past. Because we're not supposed to go there. Because that's been bought and paid for by Jesus Christ. He owns it. Our focus needs to be on the love of God. Who he is to us. What he has made us to be. And change our thinking. Repent and change our thinking. God word. Not about all the sin. He's already dealt with all. You ever wonder if he's already dealt with it, completely separated as far as the east is from the west, and you're there talking about it. It's, 
He's already forgotten it. It's like, what you saying? What you saying? That's right. Really? Yeah. No, not you. You are the righteousness of Christ. I see my righteousness all over you. How does God see us? We have an image problem in the church. We do not see ourselves properly. We are literally the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus in us. You are the righteousness of God. That means you've been made to be to have right standing with Him. You say, "Well, yeah, but I, I I still mess up and I still have sins." That's right. You do. If you didn't, you'd be a liar. But He's dealt with it all. He does not see you that way. He doesn't see you that way. Who sees you that way? The flesh sees you that way. Other people see you that way. You want to have good relationships with other people? Start talking to them according to the way that God sees them. Mm, it yes. says in Corinthians that we should no longer see each other according to the flesh. Never again. I don't care what you did in your past. I don't care how bad it was. I can't see you that way. I see you as a mighty woman or man of God filled with the Spirit of God, filled with excitement and anticipation. And just, you just can't wait to release God's life. You just can't wait to put your hands on someone to get him healed. That's the way I see you. I see you bubbling up on the inside, stirring on the inside of your spirit. It's going, yeah, let me out, let me out, let me out. <laughs> let's go, let's go, let's go. Not, not, not as someone who's, who's a sinner and messed up. That guy's dead. Amen. That guy is dead. Amen. Keep him there. Yes. Don't be a grave digger. Oh, God. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Amen. Okay, we gotta bring forth, we've gotta bring forth the life of God. Let your words be filled with life. Okay? Those of you who are have a prophetic bent, okay, ask the Spirit of God to release in you what He sees in these people. And I guarantee you, if it's if it's if it's him, it'll be positive. Because he does not see the stuff. That's right. It's junk. He doesn't see it. Amen. Woo. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you know, some of the stuff that has helped me to go around the world to get multitudes of churches free. Free. Revival breaking out all over the world because church leaders and pastors, they're just getting it. They're getting it. And they're taking it. We just got back from Mozambique. I got an email from the, our host pastor. And then the Sunday after we left, he said, here's what we did. He said, I got my people in the church. I gave them a little training and we called up all the sick. Now, when you go to those countries, everybody's sick. <laughs> yeah. It's not. I'll, I'll, I'll never forget when we went to Haiti and they were on the streets and I said to this lady on the street, I said, you know where there's some sick people? <laughs> she looked up at me, she said, are you stupid? <laughs> she said, look around you, everybody is sick. Why? Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Lord. Glory to God. You know, we ought to be we ought to be excited. We should be excited about this life that we have. I mean, do you understand? Whatever the person in front of you needs, you got what they need. You got the goods. People say to me, Oh, I, you know, I need to be trained first. I said, You need to be all oh, you need to know. You got a hand? Yeah. <laughs> Can you put it on somebody? Can you say in the name of Jesus? Can you go? <laughs> you know, if it was about us, I could understand that. But it's not. Everything is about Jesus. The kingdom revolves around Jesus. It's the life of Jesus. We have people go with us on mission trips, and they go, you know, man, you know, I don't know if I should be on this trip. You know, I'm a little messed up. I've got these sin issues in my life. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'll say, well, you want, do you really want those sin issues there? No, but I'm just, you know, I'm really, I'm really struggling. I said, no problem, come on. Mm -hmm. So we bring them on the trip, you know, and every time, you know what happens? Yeah. <laughs> As they begin to pray for people, mm -hmm. and they see blind eyes opening up underneath their hands. I love it. I watch them to go. <laughs> 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 and 
sure enough, if it's not the first night, it's the second night. They're coming in, they're on the floor crying and weeping, saying, I can't ever live the way I lived before. I just want Jesus filling every minute of my life. Was that because somebody preached their sin to them? What happened? They saw the glory. They saw who God made them to be. When we begin to see who God makes made us to be, everything in our life changes. We don't have to go on the negative side. Let's stay here and just declare and decree and do what God made us to be. You know, at first it seems weird. It seems strange because we're so used to talking the problem, right? We're so used to talking the pain. We're so used to talking about, you know, how the world fixes everything. Instead of, Jesus already took care of it all. And I can appropriate that grace by faith right now. And do you know that if you will pray for other people, you will see you will see things happen way faster, way faster than you could possibly imagine. It's awesome. Every one of you are qualified. What's what's the qualification? It's, you know, God. You know, the religious system's got all these qualifications. Mm -hmm. For being in ministry, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you know what God's qualifications are? Mm -hmm. Confess the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Once you're born again, mm -hmm. you are qualified to minister mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Not not being put in an office. Okay, we don't do things like that prematurely. You should never want to step into an office of say a pastor or something like that. Till you, I mean, I'm telling anybody you're thinking about that. Got a pastor back here. <laughs> Don't jump into it, right? No. Amen. Yeah, man. Yeah. No, you, you just stay out here ministering, and you know, you let God. You know, God had to bust. He almost had to kick me in the butt. I mean, to move me, because I didn't want to go. I didn't want to go. I was just so happy just ministering to people that you know, I, I did not want. I did not want any responsibility like that at, at, at all. He, he, he is big enough to put you in that place when the timing is right, okay? And let, let it be his timing. Just enjoy, enjoy your life, enjoy. You know, when we stand before him, we're not going to be standing before him for what we did while we, while we were in an office, right? It's, 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 you know, each of us individually. What would you do with that cripple that was standing in front of you? Why, why were they standing in front of you? Yeah, yeah. We've got to get over this this mindset that you know we need someone else. That we need more from God. We need something else from God. We need another anointing. We need a greater anointing. You, how do you get any more anointed than Jesus the Christ inside of you? How do you get how do you get more anointed than that? You know, the scripture says, it says in Colossians that you, you, you have the fullness of the Godhead in you. When, you. when you receive Jesus, you didn't get his head, and then he started growing the rest of his body. <laughs> you got him in his fullness. Amen. You have the mind of Christ inside of you. We got to get this thinking, thinking thing up here in line with the mind of Christ inside of us. Okay, how does Jesus think? He never thinks lack. He never thinks failure. Amen. Go ahead, read the Gospels. Show me one time that he thought lack or, 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 or failure. Never. It's always, okay. Okay. We need some tax money? No problem. Just drop the hook in the water. No problem. Whatever it was, there's never any lack or failure because that's the kingdom. Amen. It's the world that has trained us as believers to think this stinking thinking stuff. Amen. That God doesn't think that way. He's already overcome the world. He's overcome everything. And the overcomers living in you. Start talking that way. I know it'll seem weird for a while. Mm. So just tell your head, shut up. <laughs> you're you're, you're going to learn a few things now, okay? We're going to begin training you, head, how to think according to the word of God. Amen. It says a little farther in this, in this passage here in Romans 10, and how does righteousness speak? If you are the righteousness of God, how does righteousness speak? Does it speak defeat? Does it speak discouragement? Does it, does it speak issues? Does it speak about the negative things you see with other people? Does it talk that way? No! Okay, so let's just talk, just tell ourselves. You're going to talk God talk. You're going to learn it, and you're going to talk it. 
Because that's who you are. That's not hypocritical. You know what's hypocritical? Is you being born again, filled with this presence and spirit of the living God, and you still acting like a sinner. That's hypocritical. Because you're acting like a dead person. That's not who you are anymore. We just have to learn to act like who we are until it, until your head's out of the way. Amen. 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 Uh, I tried to keep myself calm tonight. <laughs> the what? The story of Moses meeting the pastor the first Sunday. We started and then we sidetracked. We need to finish that, but that's really good. The Mozambique from the pastor? The Sunday morning, the first Sunday morning from the pastor. Oh, and well, the first thing was, you know, they met us at the airport and they all had suits on. And we came with like, you know, yeah. old jeans and t shirts. <laughs> <laughs> and they looked at us like. <laughs> <laughs> and then they didn't say nothing, but, you know, they told us later, uh, you know, uh, we really thought, oh God, what did we do? <laughs> Who are these guys? Because they, there, they, they think it's everybody has to wear a suit. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and we go, you can if you want. Okay, guys, there's, there's no rule. You can wear that if you want. But they think they have to. Mm-hmm. So uh, he, he, he said, he said, okay, now the way we usually do these conferences, you know, we know that one person can't speak, uh, you know, all day long, every day for days. So we have a number of speakers. So we have, we have a bunch of, you know, good Mozambican pastors that you know they can they can like to do the second session and the fourth and switch off. I said, yeah, I'm not going to answer that yet. Okay, we'll take the first session, and then you decide after the first session whether you want other people to come in or not. Mm-hmm. Well, when 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 they saw what God did, and just the simplicity of, of what we were teaching and the truth, just so simple. When they saw that, how real it was and how powerful it was. And all, all the church leaders got healed. You know, every one of the church leaders was sick. Mm-hmm. Every one of them, from deafness to you name it. They all had something wrong with them. And every one of them that first morning got healed. Every one of them. Yeah. Yeah. God was demonstrating. He was demonstrating. He loves to demonstrate. Don't be afraid to put yourself in a position where, you know, God's got to demonstrate. Because he loves doing that. What did you want me to say? The email from the Sunday afternoon. His first service. Sunday after his first service, which was last week, last Sunday, he he sent an email and he said that he uh, he he got he, he got the people together. He, he 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 trained a few people and they they prayed for. Uh, they said the church was packed out because the word got around uh, of what happened there during the week and, and the church was just packed. All it's, it's just there's no doors, there's no windows, there's just holes, and the and the roof was made out of. Some cardboard, some bur- burlap bags, some pieces of metal, some grass. It was just, I mean, it was bizarre. And, and, and he said uh, that everyone in the church, all the sick people got healed with this church people praying. And they had never, ever done that before. Wow. And they were so excited. They ran out, they ran out of the building to go to, go to their neighbors and their friends so they could pray for them. And, 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 and that's that's just like that's just like God. You know, he, he wants he, there there wasn't there's never been any person ever been qualified. You know, if you if you come to the place where you say, God, I'm just so good. I mean, aren't you glad you got me, God? I mean, are, are you happy, God? I mean, look, look at all that I do for you. Aren't you glad, God? That's like the, the Apostle Paul. On one hand, he says, I'm a bond slave. I know it's not me. But a stitch of it is me. Except I get to enjoy it together with you as you do this through me. Wow. And then on the other hand, I have the authority to use the name of Jesus Christ. And devil, you're getting out of here now in yeah. Jesus' name. Go! And they go. They're standing in that place of authority and power and anointing, but yet at the same time, I'm a bond slave. By choice, I'm a bond slave. I've humbled myself to do whatever you want, Jesus. 
and to tool us together. We are joint heirs with Jesus. We're joint heirs with co-laborers with the Holy Ghost, right? Aren't you glad? Yeah. He doesn't ask you to do it alone. You just get you get to enjoy the ride. Whatever we see God doing in our life, remember it's him. And you are privileged and blessed to be there to be a part to see it. But he enjoys you being part of it. He wants us to be part of it. So I, 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 I just want to encourage you to um, jump ship. <laughs> get, get, out, get out of the boat that you've been in. Don't be afraid to get out in the water. Don't be afraid that you see somebody that needs some help. Don't be afraid to say, can I pray for you? It can be just as simple as thank you, Holy Spirit, for touching them, healing them, restoring them. It's simple. But as long as you, you are believing by faith, it happens. Only believe, Jesus said. Only believe. That's the simplicity of the gospel. Only believe. Amen.